Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Rice to Meet You, your comedy podcast about Asian culture. Now, I just want to take some time out before today's episode to thank you guys for all of your support and a special thank you to all of our patrons. You guys really make this podcast happen because without your support, we wouldn't be able to do it the way we do. It keeps the podcast relatively creatively free, as Nigel would put it. So thank you. And if you want to join our Patreon and get access to extra episodes and our Discord page where you can interact with other listeners and ourselves, then head on over to patreon.com slash rice to meet you pod and choose the tier that best suits you. And yeah, we thank you guys so much because we really enjoy doing this podcast and we're so glad that it's reached so many people. So again, thank you. And now on with the show. Hey guys, look how funny my profile is. Oh, <laughs> I don't get any matches, but because my profile is funny, see? <laughs> it's not because of me. It's because my profile is funny and guys can handle oh a woman who's funnier than them. That's what I tell myself when I'm lonely. I'm too funny for men. <laughs> Did, I hit, Did I hit the nerd? Did I hit the nail dick. on the head or what? You're Did such a dick. <laughs> Welcome to Rise to Meet You, a comedy podcast about Asian <laughs> culture featuring me, Nigel Ung. What? And me, Evelyn Mock. Why featuring? Why? Now? Why do you keep changing I, these I up? I say why starring just... and you're like, why so egoistic? What, 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 featuring the, what? isn't better. It's, <laughs> this it, isn't it a does, film. It's it a does podcast. It feature us. It oh, does God. feature us. What do you want me to say? <sighs> Welcome to Rise to Meet You, a just... comedy podcast about Asian culture. Uh, and um, there, there's me, Nigel Lung. Is that what you want me to say? <laughs> hosted, hosted. How about hosted by me, Nigel Lung? And then I say, and me, Evelyn Mock. Okay, fine. Next week, next week we'll do hosted. <laughs> oh, My God. God, who cares? They want the content. Nobody cares about the intro. Oh, dear. Happy, oh, dear, Happy oh, dear, Lunar oh, dear. New Year to all of our listeners. Happy Chinese Happy New Year. Happy Lunar New Year. Yeah, Yay. we're a little bit late, but we, uh, you know, our podcast, we talk about our lives this past week. So, you know, we celebrated Lunar New Year. We did. We did. We record these always like a week ahead. So we should have congr- congratulated everybody in last week's episode. But because for us, Lunar New Year was last week. Yeah. And this episode is coming out. The week after last week. We recorded last it? week's episode. Luna New Year hasn't happened yet. And yes. I was t- too much of a heartbro- heartbroken state to talk about <laughs> Luna New Year. Okay? You were, yeah. You I was were. crying too much. But it's all good. You were. I, I appreciate all the nice support. And I see you, the, some of the DM slides. But, you know, as Evelyn said, you know, no more entertaining women in the DM slides, okay? That life is also, over. Also, women do better. You don't have to console every broken-hearted dude, especially like bros like Nigel. Listen. Don't don't get it twisted. He's getting over this. <laughs> like think... next week, he won't even think about this. Like he doesn't need your vagina for consolation. Like just keep it. Save it for a nice <laughs> dude. The funny thing is, trust me. The funny thing is, when we posted an episode, the women would message you. With their tragedies and their yes, store, yes, horror yes, stories. Yes, 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 yeah. But then yeah, the women yeah. would message me with like, <laughs> Hey, Nigel, I hope you're feeling okay. Let me know if you ever need to talk. Like, whoa. Oh, my God. Why the difference, people? Why the difference? <laughs> also, it really was. I, I don't say do better because you're doing great. They saw that I was <laughs> kind and trusting and open and emotionally available. And they're like, oh, my God. Like, this, 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 this guy is funny. He knows his lighting, you know. <laughs> he's a nice guy. Don't use, don't use emotionally available. That's a term that I use right before the podcast, and you were shitting all over it. <laughs> no. So don't you use this now to your advantage. <laughs> do not, do not, Nigel. I'm Listen so, to me. I'm so available emotionally, you know. Oh please, so come on, come what? on. I am, I am. <laughs> Just trust me, ladies who are sliding into his DMs. Just save it. Save it for somebody else. Save it for... Slide into, like, Fumi Abe's DMs. 
<laughs> Slide into John Yu's DMs. He's a doctor, by the way. John Yu's a dentist, a pediatric dentist. Slide into that. Some DM. people like different things. <laughs> okay, if you like dentists, if you like Korean dentists who live in New York City, John Yu's right there. Okay. <laughs> If you like, you know, cool Malaysian dudes, you know, who oh like... Oh, my God. Who, Ronnie Cheng's around, but he's married, yeah, so respect see, that. See? What other options do you have? Cool uh, Malaysian Henry dudes. Henry Golding's Ugh. taken. Phil me, Wang then, Settle single. for me. Settle for me. I, I think I'm a genuinely good choice, you know? They heard... They, they listened to my story last week. I was so emotionally vulnerable. And oh I was so... God reflective and thoughtful and kind and trusting Ugh. and i spoke so well of my ex-wife and do you know how much maturity maturity it takes to be cordial and on good terms with your ex-wife you know what i mean yeah all right yeah all right. okay so <laughs> i just want to thank everybody who shared their experiences of being in previous narcissistic um, personality disorder uh, emotionally abusive relationships um uh, it, it it meant a lot that people reached out and it meant so much that uh, by talking about it on the podcast that it gave you guys some kind of clarity and maybe validation for what you went through. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. And I hope that everybody is doing okay. And I'm glad think, that oh, a lot of you have gotten out of it. I also uh, think yes, a lot Nigel, of people... I <laughs> also think a lot of people... Sorry. Uh, I also think a lot of people like to see me in pain, you know? <laughs> Oh they love God. it. They love seeing the downfall. You know what I mean? So The downfall of uh, Nigel Ung. Yeah, because I, I talk a big talk, you know, and I'm always this, yeah, boy, True. you know, this this uh, high status guy, and then they love seeing me in pain, which is great. <laughs> Thanks for the listens. We appreciate it. You know, that's part of being human. It's part of being human. I don't, I don't think it was pain. I think they were just like, a lot of listeners were excited to see a more vulnerable side to you. Yeah, they love it. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give them what they want. So always vulnerable Nigel from now on, okay? Uh, so what's vulnerable about you this week? What do you want to share? This week? I don't know yet. I've, I not, Nothing big happened. There was no cancellation, no drama. <laughs> so I just celebrated Chinese New Year. Took How a lot of photos. Celebrate? Took a lot of photos with my family. You know, always Asian <laughs> parents love taking the photo stuff. And, you know, now with my newfound knowledge of good lighting... I crush uh -huh. it at the photo department, man. I, ha I have my really? lighting kit with me. I know how to diffuse it and you know, get a soft light. And I have the camera set up, automatic timer. And you know, I set up three, two, one. And then, Are you serious? Do you do you set up lighting just yeah. for like taking casual photos now? Yeah, family photos all together. Yeah. Are you serious? What yeah. camera do you use to take it? The Your camera phone, I'm or using right to... now. Oh my God. My Canon <laughs> with a nice lens and everything. Are you gonna? Are you gonna like? Are you gonna develop it and give it to your mom before you no, leave? No, it's a JPEG. It's a J. <laughs> what even develop what? So, so she can frame it and put it up in her house. Yeah, she can just she can just print it if she wants to. I said to the oh JPEGs. <laughs> what do we develop? So you put it? so much effort into lighting and taking a really nice photo, and then you're like, she could just print it. She could just print it if she wants to. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I gave her the digital copies. What more do you want me to do? <laughs> what more do you want me to do? You could develop it and frame it and give it to her as a gift before you leave. No, too too bad. I I air dropped it to her. That's gift enough. Oh I, I've my air god! I dropped it to my family. That's so <laughs> funny. That's so funny. No, but it's so nice, you know. And also, if you are good at the photography shit, take photos of your parents. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be around forever. <laughs> and then when they're gone, you would hate yourself if you have all this. If I had all this nice lighting and the only uh -huh. photo I had of my, my, with my family were just shitty, blurry, terrible lighting <laughs> photos, I would hate myself. I'd be like, That's what I Why have. did you buy all these lights? For what? You can't even capture your loved ones on film. You're a failure. So that's why I took some nice photos. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't let Thanks that regret. Thanks for talking directly to me again. Yeah, like this is, this is Evelyn. What you're gonna use your ring light? <laughs> Sit your parents in front of the ring light? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, that's that's, that's what <laughs> I mean. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta treasure them. You know, so the way of treasuring them is uh, showing my vulnerable side here. Hopefully, get more clicks. So one way to treasure our parents. <laughs> 
This is what Nigel learned from last week's episode. People loved him being vulnerable, and now he's trying to use it. I'm to, monetizing to my vulnerability. Oh, you my know, God. that's what people do. Yeah. No, but in all seriousness, it's like, yeah, I I know how to set up a picture, take a nice one, you know. So, it like if I if anything happens to them or me, you know, if my something happens to my plane, at least they have a nice high res, well lit photo. <laughs> oh right? my god, my <laughs> my funeral's ready. Just print it out. Nice lighting, wacky on the casket, <laughs> done. So the thing is, like, my grandmother, um, like, <laughs> as soon as she hit, like, um, 90, uh-huh. she started just to pose everywhere and made <laughs> us take photos of her because she was, like, basically posing for her funeral photo. Yeah. <laughs> so she would pose everywhere and just do, like, this, you know? And she's like, take this photo, take this photo. And we're like, okay, grandma. <laughs> and then one time we went... <laughs> We went to an outlet store, and next to that outlet store, there's, like, this huge sex toy outlet store. <laughs> and she play- she stood in front of it, and she's like, take my photo, Evelyn, take my photo. And I'm like, okay, Grandma. <laughs> so now I have, like, a funeral-style photo of my grandmother in front of, like, Martin's sex <laughs> Martin's sex shop outlet store and she's just standing there so cute and so small and then just right above her it says Martin's sex (laughs) shop (laughs) it's like I'm like it's the best photo it's it's honestly the best photo um I've ever taken and also my favorite photo of my of my grandmother (laughs) probably my favorite photo ever too bad Um, your grandma doesn't have grandchildren who's good at lighting and photography (laughs) That is so sad. I used natural lighting that day, actually, Nigel. Natural oh, lighting. Oh, okay. Some okay, light. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what do you do then for Chinese New Year? I was late to go to my aunt's house uh, for for dinner. And so, uh, but she lives like two minutes away from me. So it was very close. And so I went there. And basically my aunt, because my mom's side of the family are born and raised in India. So my aunt was the one hosting Chinese New Year's dinner. But she only cooks Indian food. So we ate Indian food on Lunar New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's I okay. mean, it was really nice because it was great food. I it mean, was it super is, tasty food. It is your culture, too. It is your mom's culture. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it was such a... And I felt like such a multicultural queen. I was like, look at this. We're having Indian food on Lunar New Year. We're all, we all look Chinese, but some of them are brown on the inside. <laughs> But it was really, really lovely. Um, And then we just had like, we watched Bollywood films or we had them playing in the background. And my aunt was like, uh, there was like a film that came up and she's like, oh, this used to be your favorite song to dance to when you were a kid. I was like, really? And, you know, it was just like people doing like the dance. It's a film called Sajan Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Madhuri Dixi, I think her name is. Um, And so uh, they were just doing like these really like funny like really complicated Bollywood dances. And I'm like, oh, so did I copy that? Was there, is there a video of me doing that? Because that would be hilarious to see. Was there? No. Oh, okay. (laughs) See, this is the great thing about being a refugee. You just pick up all these cultures that you're forced to travel through. Isn't it amazing? I guess it people, is. People yeah. never talk about the 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 pros of being a refugee. It's always like, oh, this life is so sad. They got bombed and they have to leave. Well, they picked up culture, bitch. They okay? picked up culture. When will ever? If Evelyn's parents weren't refugees, they'll never watch a Bollywood film. You see, they have more culture because they're refugees. Well, they they weren't really refugees. <laughs> what they weren't? Why? I thought they, you said they were in your in your Edinburgh stand-up show. You know, the, the paint yourself as a victim type festival. Uh, they totally said they were refugees. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? God. I said that my great grandparents left China because it was so poor and they went to India to make money. Oh, you didn't so, say the word refugee? I did not I say I guess the that word, word wasn't trendy when you did your debut show in 2017. Oh my God. You're the one who keeps talking about refugees. <laughs> Stop talking about refugees. I'm just trying to show people the pros and cons of being a refugee. People don't talk about the pros enough, the good parts about being a refugee. You know? When else, seriously, when else can you look Chinese but be Indian on the inside? When? You have to be a refugee for that to happen. You have to be exiled from your country, forced to go to India. You know what I mean? You just have to be nomadic. 
You just have to be nomadic. Nobody you chooses just have to, seek to be nomadic. Better opportunities. Nobody chooses no, to be nomadic. True. You know what no, I mean? That's true. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes being refugee but is great. You gotta your... look at the plus side. Hmm? What about your forefathers? What made them go to Malaysia? Yeah, they're probably poor, but then they they can't they came to Malaysia and then like things got better, so they just stopped moving. So I didn't get to enjoy <laughs> the multiculturalness. It was just China to Malaysia, but your parent, your family. China to India and life still sucked in India. So Stockholm, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Gothenburg also, actually. Also, why? And then I'm oh, like, yeah, life sucks in Gothenburg. London, please. Yeah, Gothenburg and then Stockholm and London. Also, why would your pa- <laughs> uh, your uh, your family move from one poverty stricken country to another poverty stricken country? Well, that's the thing, Nigel. It was so poor in China. Can you imagine how poor it was in China that they went to India to make money? <laughs> Can you imagine how poor it must have been in China in the twenties? Like, because that was the plan too. They were like, "Okay, we're gonna go there. We're gonna make some money, and then we're gonna come back." Um, and then they just never came back because who who wants to go back again? Because apparently, so one of my uh, my mom's uh, my grandmother's side, they took the boat over, mm-hmm. so that was a lot easier. But then my grandfather's side, my great grandfather's side. Or no, my grandfather's side. He, they walked. So they walked they all the walked. way to India. And yeah, they walked. And apparently wow. they didn't know. Like they didn't know that they were going to India. They just kept walking. They just kept walking in a direction. And then they like crossed a bunch of places and they were like, oh, okay, we're in India now. Well, might as well settle here. I mean. I think they were, they were probably aiming to walk towards india walking from china to india surely you must have passed a few other countries that you could consider right well those countries would be like nepal right nepal's not bad it could be a sherpa I know, you know but... you can try to get white people up the mountain you know <laughs> <laughs> is that a good job well get white people they were up mount very, everest very getting people up mount everest how many how many white people do you think sherpas have seen die <laughs> i don't know the bodies are still there, you know. Most people who die on Mount Everest, yeah. the bodies are still there. Yeah. Yeah. It's really creepy. I love it. I want to go see it, you know. You want to go see the bodies? Yeah, so I can tell people, like, this is what ambition does to you. So stop having ambition. <laughs> <laughs> this guy used to be, you know, a you know, super high-flying corporate type. You know, wanted to add this new thing to his LinkedIn profile. I climbed Mount Everest, <laughs> you know. And look where he is now. He's frozen in a cave. Fetal position, dead. Is it's that the not life ambition, you want? Though. Is it? It's not ambition, though. It's um, ego, wouldn't it be? Or like thrill-seeking. I mean, same thing, same thing. Same, okay. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> I remember Chinese, uh, Chinese New Year, I went, my sister and I we went to, uh, she came over to console me, you know, because I was very sad last week, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. And then we went. We went to call KL, this is the city center, to just walk around and uh, try to buy some stuff. We walked past this little alley, and I saw that it was like uh, this lady was selling noodles. You know, I was like, okay, let's let's mm-hmm. let's eat here. That's street food. I haven't done street food in Malaysia. Things just, was just opening up from lockdown and that that week. You know, so I said, like, okay, let's let's eat here because I haven't had street food in a while. So I sat down. And then I, ha- I ordered uh, Indomie Goreng, which means fried Indomie. You know, like Indomie is a brand of instant noodles. So they just stir fry it. Uh, and I was just like, okay, I'm hungry. Let's just order that. And then when the noodles came, I, I took a taste and I was like, holy shit, this is, this is amazing. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. maybe it's because I lived in the UK too long. Uh, I, I, I just crave Malaysian food. I, I fed it. I gave my sister a bite and she, her eyes just lit up. And she's like, whoa, this is really, really good. And I ate it. It was just magical. I don't know if you saw my Insta story. I it's, did, it's yeah. It's magical, I did. okay? Like every bite <laughs> okay. had like a good wok hay, the texture. Oh, yeah, frying instant noodles is, is a, it's an art, okay? I'm going to do a review some, someday as Uncle Roger. But <laughs> frying instant noodles, like, the texture is so important to get right. It can't be too uh-huh. hard. It can't be too soggy. It needs to be springy, you know, al dente. It needs to be al dente. Al dente. It needs to have some wok okay. hay, some chartness. Add some garlic in there, some spice in there, and the spice has to be a clean spice. Not that coconut milk bullshit, you know, you have in the West. And then it was it was amazing. And when I was eating the noodles for that forty five minutes, I didn't think about all my problems. That's the magic <laughs> of good food, okay? And then for the whole rest That's of the day, I was, saying, I was in a good mood. I was in a good mood. 
Yeah. What were you saying? That's what I've been saying. Just like, just, just numb your emotions with food. That's what I've been doing all of my life. Listen, you try to do that in a Chinese takeaway in the UK and it just can't work. Why do you, you <laughs> just got past that. You apologized and now you're bringing it up again? Yeah. Like again? Yeah, I'm trying to make <sighs> it funny again. And yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. You're the only one laughing, Nigel. You're the only You're one laughing. You're laughing now. You're laughing. This is like a multi-episode arc for people who don't know. I piss some people off by saying Chinese takeaway food is shit, mm. which I thought was a very factual statement. Oh, uh, did you? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I had the uh, into me amazing. I was happy for the rest of the day. And I felt joy yeah. again for the first time. Because Nigel is just so vulnerable and and emotionally aware, you know. I just felt joy again. And then the next day, I wanted to show him, uh, another friend of mine how good the noodles were, and I brought him there. And then and then the noodles sucked because because it was a lunch rush, and she I think she couldn't handle the pressure, and then it just no. sucked. And I was so disappointed. I felt like I got crushed again. That's I really so funny. breaking my heart again. <laughs> so now the noodles broke your heart yeah. are you gonna do a rant about the noodles breaking your heart yeah the manipulative noodle uh the manipulative street food stall owner who just made shitty noodles for me um but it's okay it's street mean, food you know street food is like this sometimes the quality is hit or miss sometimes it is and also because it's the lunch rush as you say like my dad always says he's like never go to a restaurant when it's the rush because the food will be not as good because the chefs don't have time to focus on the food. Mm. See, I didn't know um, that. I just go to food place. I just have lunch when it's lunchtime. So I'm like, <laughs> sorry, I didn't come at 3.30 p.m., you know. Was that the time you came the day before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was nobody there, just me and my sister. Exactly. So that's when you should go. That's always what my dad says. He's like, always go after the lunch rush. Um and always go to dinner like later. But is that how so you want to live? the chef has time. How will you ever have friends? You know, your friends ask yeah. you, hey, Emily, you want to get lunch tomorrow? I say, yeah, sure. Does 3.30 work for you? Like, like <laughs> how will you ever have friends if you keep doing that? Yeah, that's why I'm very much alone. Yeah. <laughs> I realized as well, like this week, just living on my own, I'm like, I literally, the other day, I sat on my bed and just looked out the window for like 20 minutes looking at the snow falling because <laughs> I was so bored. I, I have nothing to do. I'm living on my own. And all I do is like I wake up and then I work. And then when dinner comes around, I'm too, t I'm too tired to make dinner. So I just like eat something quick like a sandwich. And then I just sit around and just don't do anything. And I'm like... Like, you know, you can text people and you can, I, I talk to my friends and stuff, but then they all have families and stuff. So I'm like, okay, what, what am I supposed to do now? Like living alone is so boring. It's so boring. Don't you have Netflix? <laughs> do you have Netflix? I have Netflix. There's only so much you can watch on Netflix. I mean. Do you have a K-drama yeah, podcast I, you have to prepare for? Do you have K-dramas Well, to I do watch? that. I do that. I watch my K-dramas and stuff. But that's also work. That's work. Now, that's something... I think doing this K-drama podcast is, is removing the joy of watching K-dramas for me because it's work now. Yeah, you have to write about the thematic elements, you know. I do, and I'm like, oh, I'm so bored. I just want to watch Kang Hanul be, be, like, hot for a second. I mean, nobody's forcing you to do the K-drama <laughs> pod, you know. <laughs> You wanted to do it yourself. I I'm like, yeah, let, 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 go go for it. Like, if you want to stop wanna... it, nobody's going to be upset <laughs> if you wanted to stop it. I might just stop it and I might just, because I created a, a separate Discord uh, forum for the K-Drama podcast. And maybe that's all I wanted, really. I just wanted a place where I could gossip about K-Dramas with like-minded nerds. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because <laughs> now it's like... Now it's just like, it's so much effort. And I'm like, oh, it's taking away the joy of just watching and gossiping about K-dramas because I'm trying to like, you know, add a different angle into the podcast so that it has some relevance. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work. It it's is. It's a lot of work. Podcasting is a lot of work. 
And now it you're is, doing yeah. it yourself. You can see all the shit I handle for you behind the scenes. <laughs> you know? That's true. You I probably mean, go about also, life thinking, you know, Nigel doesn't do anything for the pod. He just asked me to edit and he asked me to post. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> we do. We both do things. Like, yeah, I know, I know. I but know. it. I, I realize that because I'm doing this on my own as well. It's literally just me sitting in a room talking to myself for like an hour and a half. And then I have to listen back to everything. And I'm like, I sound like a nut job. And then I have to like edit everything as well. So I'm like, oh. How do you think I feel is, doing YouTube tough. videos? The same thing. <laughs> and I'm doing an accent and I'm talking to my computer. <laughs> I'm yelling at my computer. Hi, yeah. Jamie Oliver. Hi, yeah. <laughs> Why your tofu come in juice box? <laughs> what the hell is chili jam? <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, do you ever find, Nigel, do you think in Uncle Roger voice? I think I just think in Uncle... I, I, I really think Uncle Roger is part of me, you know? You I know, know. It's, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. so natural. I, even I'm surprised. I do some radio interviews. And I play both characters on, on the interview. Oh my god! No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I you do. do not do that. They tell me to do that. I'm like, I, oh I didn't. God. I didn't think I could. I did it for the first interview. I did. It was an English radio station in Malaysia, and they're like, "Do Uncle Roger? Do Uncle Roger?" Like, okay, I'm trying to see if I can get him. Hey, Uncle Roger, are you free to do it? Like, Hi, yeah, Uncle Roger, not free. Uncle Roger, busy <laughs> making YouTube video. You do interview yourself. Oh no, Uncle Roger. They really, they really want to see you. They really like your work. Shut the fuck oh up. My- <laughs> Why did you, if you were going to start it, why did you start it by trying to coerce Uncle Roger out? Like, why didn't you just go into Uncle Roger full stop? But now you're like, oh, Uncle Roger, do you want to do this interview? (laughs) I'm like Uncle Roger's uh, agent now. (laughs) What what is this? Yeah, you're Uncle Roger's agent. (laughs) Nigel, that's so funny. Why would you do it that way? <laughs> Why would you do no it? No sparkling that water. Way? Hi, uh, Uncle Roger. Don't want to do this interview. Okay, Uncle Roger. I'll ask them for sparkling water. Is there anything else you need? <laughs> oh my God, Nigel, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think it's part of me, uh, and I uh-huh. like doing it. But yeah, it's doing doing stuff by yourself in front of the camera or just in the yeah. microphone is is re- is really weird. Got to get used to it's it. It's so weird. Yeah. It's really weird. Even though I do like talking. I like talking a lot, but um, I think it's you just, very strange. You just need to get used to living by yourself, you know? It's new to you because you've never had, like, uh, living by yourself is great. I love it. But because you've I've been living by with myself housemates. Before. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I keep Stockholm, forgetting about that. I, I, oh, I, keep, I keep forgetting your life before London because it doesn't really concern <laughs> me. So. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, Malaysian boy? What were you saying? <laughs> No, I think I think you just have to like. Sometimes it, maybe it takes a bit more effort to socialize if you live by yourself because you can't just it walk does. into the kitchen yeah. and see does, your scummy yeah. housemates there. You know, my scummy housemates—they are lovely people, actually. Mm. Um, is that why no, you it does. To move it, out? It, it <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I do enjoy living by myself because I can. Everything is as I want it, but it is that social aspect of it. Um, and especially now during the pandem- pandemic, like I have made an effort, like m- I invited my friends over and I made brunch for them, which was really Ooh. nice. Um, I, uh, I'm having my cousins over this weekend and doing the same thing, making food for them. And um, I, I'm probably going to have my parents over and make stuff for them. But it is that thing, like when you live with people, because when I lived with my parents, I was always in my room and I was always working and I'm I'm okay with being alone, but you really feel it when you're living on your own. You're like, as you said, it was just like walking into the kitchen and then my mom was there or my housemates were there. So the social aspect was a lot easier. Um, But now it's like, oh yeah, oh, I do want to, it would be so great to just like, I don't really have a friend anymore. Like when you were younger, you just had friends that you could just like, text or call or you know whenever yeah. and you knew that they would be available to like have a chat with you at that point but now it's like oh my friends are like they have kids they're married they you know they're adults and so it's like oh i'm but i'm still the one who's kind of single and working creatively and you know having irregular 
sleeping patterns and you know so it's tough to find people that match you in that way yeah that's why fuck buddies exist you know yeah, okay. you gotta you gotta find okay. one you gotta find one i've been on tinder i've uh, been on tinder and gothenburg yeah how's that going it's, um I always see you boring. screenshot your Tinder profile. Like, so how desperate are you? <laughs> you know? What? You always what? screenshot your Tinder profile and put it in your Insta stories. Right? I think it's funny because I have a funny people, Tinder profile. Hey, everyone, I'm on Tinder. <laughs> please swipe, please, please. Please swipe, please. Over here. <laughs> Do you see me screenshotting my Tinder or Hinge profile, put it on Facebook or it's on Instagram? It's because yours is serious. Yours is serious. Uh, mine is so not serious. Mine's like a joke. Like, I make a joke of it and then... You make a joke because so if it fails, you're like, oh, I never tried that hard anyway. It's your defense mechanism. <laughs> yes, yes, that's hey very guys, true. Hey, guys, look very how true. funny my profile is. Oh. <laughs> I don't get any matches, but because my profile is funny, see? <laughs> it's not because of me. It's because my profile is funny and guys can handle oh a woman who's funnier than them. Oh That's why I my tell God. myself when I'm lonely, I'm too funny for men. <laughs> Did I hit, a nerd? Did I hit the a nail dick. on the head or what? You're Did such a nerd? dick. <laughs> Did I hit the nail on the head or what? Okay, I will say that was probably how I did it. Yes, See? previously. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, my type. Oh, no herpes. Dislikes herpes. Likes <laughs> not herpes. That is your fucking profile, word for word. Okay. You're missing all of the previous things. Oh, but now I, I I've nursed actually- a cortado for five hours at a coffee shop. <laughs> right. That's what you do. I fart also, in my sleep I want sometimes. Somebody rich. Sorry? I fart in oh, my yeah. sleep sometimes. <laughs> I actually changed that. And then you wonder I changed that to when, when the sun when the sun goes when the sun sets and the moon appears on the horizon and you're alone in your home and you look out the window at the snowfall and you think to yourself, why am I lonely? <laughs> why is it not working? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh, you're being such a dick, Evelyn's but it's going also very accurate. And introspective very funny. moment now, and she's seeing her <laughs> life flash before her eyes. Okay, so I will say that was how I did it previously when I didn't feel like I was ready to to connect with people. But now, uh, after my little glow up or healing process, I've actually made an effort to make a serious profile. But that means that I do get a lot more matches. I do. Finally. But that's good. They're boring. They're kind of boring. And it's like, you know, you just chit chat and you like blah, 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 blah. And also, oh, my God, this happened to me this week. I got two people who recognize me. One recognized me from Rice to Meet You. Mm-hmm. And one recognized me from uh, my cake and dick bit that I have on Swedish TV that I did on stand-up. Ah. So they recognize, like I do, it happens to me sometimes on Tinder that people recognize me from stand-up. Um, but the thing is, do you know, guess what I chatted with, with the guy who recognized me from Rice to Meet You and with the guy who recognized me from from the stand-up. Uh, what, guess. me? Me? Uncle Roger? Me? You didn't get mentioned. You didn't get no. mentioned. <laughs> what else do you have going on in your life? Oh my god. Alright, why do you mention what You're you not the you're not the main thing, Nigel, in my life. <laughs> but okay, so with the guy who recognized me for Rice to Meet You, we chatted about K drama. <laughs> and with the guy who recognized me from stand up, uh, we chatted about how rich he was, actually. <laughs> so that wasn't very specific. But it was just so funny because like the I matched with them two in a row and then both of them just like started chatting and uh they were quite fun and then but immediately he was asian as well and he was like are you on rice to meet you and then we just started chatting about k dramas it was so funny it was really really funny why don't you arrange to meet um, up you know i should arrange to meet up yeah. especially with the second guy apparently it's... he was rich <laughs> so, sorry. how rich are we talking how rich he he told me that he co-created wish Oh the and then 
he sold it and now he's like he's retired oh yeah i should totally totally meet up with him yeah yeah i'm gonna try and meet up with him (laughs) yeah because he's rich do it um and he was funny as well we talked about like i was like yeah he's like oh you're a script writer right i'm like yeah i could write a script about your life um uh the boy who uh (laughs) who had a dream to become rich well isn't isn't wish the website that sells all the pirated made in china goods yep you know yep you should send him the episode where we talk about the bluetooth devices yeah (laughs) is this you (laughs) the bluetooth device is connected uh, successfully is this your (laughs) is this your website's product sir is this did we can we order this yeah that's so funny (laughs) but it was so yeah it was funny um but that's like my tinder adventure and it's weird though because the thing is i do get recognized in sweden on tinder because of the stand-up and then also because of like my acting and stuff. And it's kind of weird to get recognized on Tinder, don't you think? No, I enjoy it a no? lot. It makes life oh. a lot easier for me, you know? <laughs> Why are you so Maybe like, I should embrace it. Yeah, Like embrace a comedian it. dude. Yeah. That's what all comedians, by the way, all male comedians always have a photo of them doing stand-up on their Tinder profile because they know that that's the most interesting part about them (laughs) and that women will go for it. Uh, Yeah, why not? If you do stand up, why not? It's it's a very sexy activity. Is it? Yeah. Is it really? Women love it. Commanding a a room. As a female comedian, I know how broken these men are. So keep away. Keep your vaginas away from their penises. Not all. Evelyn's just bitter. You know, I'm so well adjusted (laughs) and emotionally available. (laughs) Wink, wink. I'm going to use that term so much now. Emotional available is, is like woman kryptonite, right? They hear this and they just get weak. Oh, what did he say? Oh, what did he say? I brought the terminology up before the show talking about how I wanted to meet emotionally available people because I feel like I just meet non-emotionally available people. And Nigel was like, what? Oh, are you going to ask them? Oh, that's so gross. Blah, blah, blah. And even if they were emotionally available, they would never tell you. Yeah. Because there's so much pressure. No, because like, yeah, when you go on a date with someone, if the woman asks, so, are you emotionally available? I would immediately (laughs) be like, what the, what, what? (laughs) Nobody would ask that. So how how would you phrase it? How how would you phrase it then? To to kind of gauge if someone's emotionally available. I mean, you would see it in their profiles, right? Okay. You would see it in their profiles, right? They would be like, um, you know, uh, looking for a serious relationship or like, you know, like the, there are signs that tell you people who are serious and who aren't. Um, like if you're, I'm learning like on Tinder, if you don't have like a profile text, you're just looking for a hookup. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I should delete my profile text then. Hmm. <laughs> What's your profile text, Nigel? I don't remember. I don't have, I probably have my Instagram handle on there. You know. Can I? Can you read it? Ah, <sighs> fine. I make videos on YouTube. Insta, Mr. Nigel Ng, 510. That's my profile text. (laughs) Who cares? Nobody cares. It works for me. (laughs) What what should I I put? Emotionally available. You know, I want to have puppies in the future with you. Is that what you want? I make videos on YouTube. Instagram, Mr. Nigel Ng, 510. Yeah, That's so funny. all the things people need to know about me. That is true, actually. That is all the things people need to know about you. Do you want to see mine? Uh, no, I know. I know what yours is. I've changed it. Oh, really? Okay, to re- read yours out. I did this because, don't make fun of me, I listened to a podcast about <laughs> dating. You know when you say, don't make fun of me, like my brain just perks up, like, okay, here we go, <laughs> here we go. I'm too, I, I just want to be brave enough to be kind. That That's coming. That's coming. <laughs> Okay, because I'm actually making an effort. I'm actually making effort. So I listened to this podcast about dating. Okay. And um, it's a dating coach. And she was like, you can say so much in your profile. And you like people reading your profile will understand if you're serious or not. So I just made this profile. Okay. So cringe. Can't wait. Can't wait. Here we go. (laughs) Locked and loaded. Oh, God. (laughs) 
daughter to chef who's inherited the culinary enthusiasm. Uh, um, again, they are not chefs. The Chinese takeaway people, they're not no. chefs. How about daughter to cook? All right, let's stop it. Okay, I'm not no, doing carry on, carry on, carry on. <laughs> I'm not doing carry, it. I'm no, not finish, doing it. finish reading it. Nope. You nope, said, nope, no, nope. please. Nope. Please. Nope. Please, nope. please. You're a dick. You're please, a dick. Please. Please, please, please. Sorry, I, I will only make fun of you after you finish the whole thing, okay? Please, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Daughter to chef. Okay, I got that. <laughs> Who's inherited the culinary enthusiasm. Okay. Um, may uh, invite you to a few experimental... Dinners for the adventurous. Um, I watch too many true crime documentaries. I cry rivers to K-dramas. I work as a comedian and I travel a lot in my work, but my base is in Gothenburg for now. <sighs> I get along best with happy, open-minded people who like a good laugh and a good conversation. Um, I myself laugh to The Office, Rick and Morty. I can quote 30 Rock uh, a bit, but not so much that it becomes annoying. That's pretty, that's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. So that's my serious profile so that's, because I'm making an effort. That's what your dating coach tells you will get dick? Well, that's what the dating coach in the podcast says is like, if you want to meet serious people, you yourself have to be serious. Uh, And I'm like, okay, I want to meet funny people. But at the same time, funny people on on these things, like funny profiles on these things. I don't know if they attract funny people or not. But then I have like my friend who um, she met her husband on Tinder and they're both very funny. And they matched with each other because they both liked their profile text, which was Uh. very funny. So I'm like, maybe I just hold out. Maybe I do make a funny profile text and then I just hold out until I meet a funny person. Yeah, you'll meet one. No rush, right? You're hot (laughs) and beautiful. You have a glow up now. Every YouTube video we put out is comments. Evelyn's glowing today, you know? (laughs) <laughs> it's just because I'm using highlighter. <laughs> That's good though. No, I can it's I can good. really see a change, and it's nice that you are working. You are putting in more effort and being making it more serious in your Tinder profile. Well, That's I good. am, and also, oh sorry. No, I'm saying, I'm saying that's good. That's good. Thank you, and also it's like because it's like okay, we, I've gone through this healing process now at the end of 2020, and now it's like oh, I have to deal with the dating part of it. I have to deal with like being with people part of it and i'm like okay how do we do this because every time basically when whenever i would think about having like a relationship or anything i would always get very anxious and i would be like oh i don't want to i'm 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 gonna I, I can't do that i'm gonna push it away um and i've realized that that's i i read about it um I read about why some people feel, you know, because I do really want intimacy, but at the same time, whenever it shows up, I push it away. Mm. Um, And so I read, I tried to Google that, and what came up was attachment theory. Oh, no, here we go. I'm sure people who've listened to the podcast are familiar with it. More YouTube videos from a different psychologist? (laughs) Is that what I'm hearing? (laughs) So Dr. Ramani, no more Dr. Ramani, is some new doctor? Is (laughs) Is that no, true? there's not a new doctor. Okay. There's just YouTube. It, there's just Google results. So, um, what issues do you have? Uh, AKA, what wrong with you? What wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I really want to oh do our garage works as, as a therapist, you know. That is my, <laughs> I feel like my whole lifelong <laughs> ambition is to make that video. <laughs> Oh my God, I really, I would not, I'm not going to be your patient in that video, Nigel. <laughs> please, please, it's just please, acting. Evelyn, what wrong with you? What wrong with you? What you finally you? find man. <laughs> Why are Wheeling, Tinder give profile you so serious? Hi, yeah. <laughs> I hate being vulnerable with you, Nigel, but I don't have another podcast to do this. Listen. So it has to be in this one. <laughs> It's also a comedy podcast, so I don't I know, know. I, I, I don't know. know why you're blaming me for fulfilling my job description as a comedian. You know. Oh 
good. So we can have like uh, we can have you can have your vulnerable pod. Maybe after the K drama pod, you can have like Evelyn's vulnerability pod as our bonus <laughs> episodes, and you can just go on and on. I won't stop you. That's fine. <laughs> Evelyn's vulnerability pod. Well, yeah. to be fair, like I experimented with the opening of the K drama pod mm-hmm. uh, last I week, heard, I where heard. I talked about my personal th- life, and people enjoyed that more than the actual podcast. <laughs> maybe that's so. Maybe I should. Something. Maybe yeah. I should just start that. Maybe maybe, Evelyn's maybe diary. our bonus episodes could be like uh, things that Nigel interrupt interrupted me on. <laughs> So this week, when I was trying to talk about my trauma, <laughs> Nigel interrupted me. So welcome to the, the, the Evelyn's vulnerability part where I actually fully yes. explore the shit yes. when Nigel's not around. Yes, 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 yes. We need to do that. This week for our Patreon special, I'm going to talk about attachment theory. You know that thing that I mentioned before Nigel went on his rant about Chinese takeaways again? And by the way, I'm so sorry, you guys. I really try, but he just keeps talking and I can't keep him quiet. I can't control what comes out of his mouth. Oh, my God. (laughs) Can I have my version of it, too? Yeah, your version. So, <laughs> yeah, bros. Welcome right. to this week of Evelyn, <laughs> of me continuing talking <laughs> over Evelyn's boring vulnerability <laughs> shit. <laughs> Listen right. to this Patreon episode extra if you want to laugh. <laughs> okay, um, okay. So tell you me You can more release about that on 4chan if you want. <laughs> No, no, we'll talk about the, you know, we'll talk probably a lot of manscape, a lot of manscape stuff. <laughs> I'll talk about a lot of manscaping stuff. But okay, anyways, attachment issues. I want to listen. I, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to open myself up and be more vulnerable and emotionally available and just trying to be more of a better person in general. And I want to support my friend. <laughs> I wonder, have I, have, have I managed to affect you, Nigel? Yes. Have you not, okay. do you not see that? Do you not I see really the things know. I, the, the, the amount I've changed for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, okay, okay, okay. One, one, one example. Do you think uh-huh. me a year ago would use terms like future faking? You know what I mean? I mean, that's just you learning terms. Well, because of you. Because I actually watched the videos. You sent them to me <laughs> and I watched it. Okay. okay. My God, have some confidence in yourself. I'm a different person. I have confidence in myself. I'm just wondering if you've been affected by me yeah. as much as I've been affected by you. You know, like, you know, isn't that like a theory? You are like the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Uh-huh. And I essentially hang out with you the most. So, of course, Aww. you affect me. Yeah. Aww. I don't see you. Oh, and yeah, I... you do cry a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> so vulnerable. So vulnerable. Nigel does cry a lot more, actually. Yeah. A lot more. <laughs> because of Evelyn. And Evelyn cries less. So, it's great. So I took some of your tears away from you. Okay. <laughs> so yes, you have changed okay. me, and you know you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most, and I hang out with you a lot, and I wouldn't change that. You know, I think you're a good Aww. influence. You're a good influence. Thank you, Nigel. Yeah. See, so sweet. <laughs> so okay, f- t- tell me about your attachment issues. I really want to know. Okay. Just because so I interrupt you theory. doesn't mean I don't want to know. After I finish interrupting <laughs> you, I-, I expect you to carry on. <laughs> the patriarchy talking um i think okay so attachment theory basically is the uh theory of how you learn to attach to your primary caregivers when you grow up as a child so a child learning how to attach to their parents and from that it's basically how you learn to bond with other people and so if your parents are you know open and loving and you know set boundaries and you know are a source of support at the same time as being able to offer you independence and encouraging you to go out and explore the world then you will grow up with a secure attachment which means that you're basically um you are independent but you are also able to 
connect with other people in a healthy way and have healthy relationships. And however, so there are basically three insecure attachments um, and they are called anxious attachment. And then we have avoidant dismissive attachment. And then we have avoidant fearful attachment. And so anxious attachment is usually if you've grown up with parents who don't communicate feelings properly, or you've grown up in a household where feelings weren't communicated very well, because then you grow up and you become anxious about it and you start second guessing what everybody is saying. You don't really trust what everybody's saying. You grew up very insecure about your own worth. And so you're constantly trying to seek validation from partners as opposed to, you know, seeking it from yourself. Uh, and then with um, avoidant dismissive, it's like you just don't, uh, you don't like feelings at all. So you try to suppress feelings. And then with uh, avoidant uh, fearful, it's a mix between anxious and dismissive. So it's also called disorganized attachment style, which means that you really long for intimacy, but then when it shows up, you you dismiss it. Um, and so it's like, that one is the most, I think, probably when people refer to like hot and cold, people who are hot and cold, that's usually fearful avoidant. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. I'm an enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, don't, don't quote me on all of this. By the way of describing it, I'm thinking in my head like, well, if that's the truth of the world, that all Asian kids are fucked. I know. Okay. <laughs> We're all what anxious attachment people. Like, I know, I know. <laughs> that's the thing I don't like about psychology. It's very white centric, isn't it? They assume yeah. everybody's parents are white. Yeah. What if we are the normal? That's very ones? true. What if, what if we are the normal? What if anxious true. attachment is the the default state of being? What if that's how human beings are supposed to be? I think I think a wide majority are anxious. A wide majority. I certainly am. I think I, you can be a mix of all of it. I think I may be fear, I used to be fearful avoidant. I'm definitely anxious. Uh, I'm trying to to work through it so that I can be secure. Um, because when, when it comes to me, it's like, uh, like, yeah, like you say, all, all, I grew up in an Asian household, no talking about feelings or anything. Maybe it's more like noticeable in the west because all of the other kind of household talk about feelings maybe the west is wrong maybe we shouldn't maybe talk about feelings wrong. yeah why do we always maybe assume talking would... about feelings is good you know you ever think about that you ever think about that <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe nigel talking about feelings is good <laughs> well i mean it's been it's been that's yeah. that's the that's the uh what the the common uh, thought process, right? That's the common thought people have. Yeah, talking about feelings is good, but mm -hmm. it's also a very Western centric thought, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do get what you mean. Yeah. So. And it's like, and it is that thing because, as you say, like in Asian households, we don't necessarily talk about feelings. But you, I think, are you have secure attachment. You're very well adjusted. Oh really? Oh, thank you, you, thank you. You know, like. Um, you don't, you know, other people's behavior don't necessarily reflect on your self, so uh, self image. The type of people who lie to you and then sleep with other people behind your back and promise you everything <laughs> and then, but don't ever do anything about that. And also just try to um, play multiple people. Like, what kind of attachment is that? What kind of attachment is that? Uh, that is bitch attachment. Yeah. <laughs> It does a bit it's a very psycho and they live in bitch. Stockholm and they say okay. they're gonna leave someone but they don't. What kind of attachment is that? What type of attachment is that? <laughs> For somebody who said, I wouldn't even spend seven hours on thinking about her. He spent seven years. Of blah, course. Blah, 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 blah. Of course she appears in my head sometimes. <laughs> Alright? Sometimes you wake up at four thirty in the morning and you feel a bit vulnerable and small. In the darkness. <laughs> Excuse me, what did you say? Of what did you say? <laughs> sometimes you feel a bit vulnerable and small. It's 4.30 oh my and God. you're like, oh my God, you know. And she, she pops in my head. And sometimes you wonder how they're doing. You wonder like, oh, yeah, is, she, is she sad true. about this at all? Or is she, 
that's so happy to be rid of me and like, oh my God, there's a whole weight off my shoulder. Or is she a little bit sad? But she can't tell the new guy <laughs> she's sad, you know, because this thing ruin it. Sometimes you have those thoughts, right? Every now mm-hmm. and then. Yeah, I think it's only human. But it's just, you know, sometimes in, in the, the, the break of dawn, it's quiet and it's, oh you feel alone and, you know, your alarm hasn't rang yet and, and your iPhone's still on that yellow mode, the night shift mode where it's, the screen is yellow. Do you feel extra lonely because it looks sepia? Your phone looks sepia, <laughs> you know? And then you look at your wallpaper, it's your family, but because it's yellow, it looks like an old photo. And that's why you feel a little bit lonely. So you think you're dead? <laughs> <laughs> Because it's an old photo and you're like, oh my God. No, don't you have those moments? We wake up. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. Well, not. A, I had those moments a lot um, as I was healing. But now, no. Like, I have to. Oh my God. There was one moment. I was in a hotel room. I was filming in Finland and I was in a hotel room and I was watching these YouTube videos and somehow YouTube started playing Oprah <laughs> and Oprah was she had written a letter to her younger self for the 60 minute segment called note to self. And she was reading this letter and it was so graceful and so loving and so understanding and so beautiful and thoughtful to her younger self. And all of a sudden I just started sobbing. I was like, (laughs) Oh my God. Oh, I need to do this to my younger self. I need to write a letter where I (laughs) appreciate and forgive and like understand what she went through. Um, So yes, I've had those moments, Nigel. (laughs) What would I write to my younger self? (laughs) Hey bro, you're doing great, man. Keep it up. (laughs) You are perfect in every way. Let's keep it up, bro. You're crushing it. You're crushing it. <laughs> oh, this relationship you're in, it's not going to work out. But don't worry. Just just write it out. Write it out. Enjoy oh, the sure moments while they last. Make sure to get an EU passport. Make sure to get an EU passport before you <laughs> break up. Invest in Bitcoin. Invest in Bitcoin, <laughs> you idiot. Invest in Bitcoin, please. <laughs> Oprah, it's what a, a sh- sure thing. Actually, that that Oprah mm. letter is so fake. Yeah, buy my letter mean? to my young self would be like buy lots of Bitcoin and hold it, and you don't have to work <laughs> a, a, a day ever again in your life. That's what I would say to my younger self. Instead of I forgive you, you are like you are you're learning and you're you're being you're doing great, and you need to be more patient in life. And I know things don't always go your way, and you feel like you have a lot of flaws. But I forgive you. You need to have some patience in yourself. Who will say that? I'm gonna say buy Oprah Bitcoin. Oprah said that. Buy Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's very funny. Yeah. Um. But okay, so I have had those moments, Nigel. And that's why now I feel like, because there was a time, I don't know if it was like, because in the process that I was going through, like, I felt like I was grieving. I honestly felt like I was grieving for my past self, for the dreams I used to have, for, (laughs) like, it sounds insane. And I really should be talking to Oprah about this rather than you. (laughs) Well, Oprah, you, but, well, you can't you can't get to her, so you have to settle for me instead. I know, you know? I know. <laughs> She's too busy for but you. It was just like it, it, it. There was a time when I just feel like I was in mourning, um, and now I feel like I've come out of it, and I'm quite happy. And so I don't feel, I don't feel the heartbreak um, that I used to, uh, but I do feel kind of bored. I think it's boredom now rather than loneliness, if anything. Okay. Yeah. So what type of attachment is that? Is that fearful? <laughs> is that fearful? I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn here. So I think I used to have, uh, I, I definitely have anxious attachment um, because I think a lot of what other people's behavior, I in turn, I like, I feel like it reflects upon me and that I've done something wrong, but I'm starting to learn. Like, I'm like, other people's behavior doesn't necessarily reflect upon me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it has to do with them all i can do is kind of i can only look at the facts that are here um and that's something that i talked to my therapist about as well where she was like just 
look at the facts. Like, just look at the facts and you'll be fine. And you can't do anything about it. Like, you can only see what's happening right now. Like, you can only be in the moment. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, simple stuff like that. Uh, that you kind of have to work on. Sounds like a very boring way me. to live your life, you know? Just look at the facts. It is, isn't it? Feelings. I mean, you need yeah. some feelings, too. You want to be Well, of course someone. you have feelings, but you can't let those feelings... You can't run with feelings. You need to ground them, right? I mean, I mean, I think it's very, very good advice because now I'm thinking back to the whole psycho bitch situation. Look at the facts. You mentioned something, right? Like uh, she was not very ambitious. And now looking yeah. at the facts, you're right. She wasn't. She was very unambitious. And I think if I did end up spending my life with her, I would be dragged out. Again, you are the closest, the average of the five people you hang out with the most, right? So she'll drag me down to her level. And yeah, I can't. Mm-hmm. I think I'll lose a big part of it if I stop being ambitious. And I'll just go through life with this malaise. I'm like, why am I not happy? And I won't ever know. It's because I don't have ambition anymore. You know, I'll feel I lose a part of my identity. And I think from now on, I think my rule now is I think I'm only ever going to date someone seriously if they have like, if they carry two phones with them. That's my gauge now. If they have a work phone and a personal phone, then I can consider (laughs) dating you. Okay, not these one phone bitches. Okay, <laughs> only date people who have two phones now. What if they have one phone but two SIM cards? Doesn't count. It needs to be a work Why? phone. A, Why? Oh, it needs to be a whole separate <laughs> cell phone plan, a different phone, a different passcode you have to unlock. You know? How do you know? How do you know it's a work phone? What if it's what if it's a shady bitch and she just has two phones and one of them is for her relationship and the other is for hooking up? Then I wouldn't even find out that she has two phones, right? Then she's still oh. a one phone having bitch, you know? <laughs> That's my type now, people. If you want to sign to my DMs, make sure you have a work phone and a personal phone. And I want you to send me a picture of those two phones. Before I even entertain your DMs, okay? So, okay, do they have to be, do both have to be iPhone or one iPhone, one Android or two Androids? I, or, one, or one smartphone and one, like, you know, those old Nokia You can't kind of use phones. the, if you have a flip phone, I'm out, okay? <laughs> That's too much, too much baggage. Oh, if you're a woman oh who uses God. a flip phone, I think that there's something wrong with you. I don't know what type of oh, attachment so that funny. is, but there's something wrong with you. So I, I don't want to have any mm. part of that. That's extra level crazy right there. That's so Can you imagine texting them and they're typing on the, 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 the numbers? <laughs> you want to type the letter S and type seven four times? I don't want to date that kind of woman. <laughs> a woman with too much time on her hands. Beep, 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 beep to type one letter. You know? <laughs> I don't want a woman who plays snake still. That's a woman who hasn't moved on from the 90s. Okay? <laughs> she probably doesn't even shave. That's... <laughs> she probably doesn't even shave. Oh, don't even... Oh, don't you dare, Nigel. What? Don't you dare. What? what? I shave. I can, can I not have the same standards for the woman I see? Huh? It's not like I'm a hairy-ass person down there. Then I'm like, why oh don't you God. shave? I shave, so am I being hypocritical to want someone who shaves? <laughs> my God. But anyways, no, no, no. It has to be two smartphones, okay? The brand doesn't matter. But if you have like an Android and an iPhone, then I also have like, if you want to do Android, do both Androids. Don't just do one iPhone, one Android. It shows that you're indecisive. You can't make up your mind, you know? So I also feel that women with two phones are probably too busy to try to fuck you over. You know what I mean? They have emails. They have Zoom calls. They have Slack messages to attend to. (laughs) They don't have time to scheme and be like, what excuse do I tell Nigel today because I want to fuck some other guy? <laughs> you know? Yes, definitely. I think that's a good rule for me. I only that's date women with two you. phones now. Exactly. That's what I've been telling you. You should date a boss-ass businesswoman. Yeah, you want to say bitch. You want to ambitious. Say, you want to say bitch. No, you no, I didn't. You want to say bitch. No, I Just didn't. Just say it. It feels good. Just say it. Come on. No. I, I should date a what? I should date Boss a... Boss-ass businesswoman. <laughs> Just say bitch. <laughs> Just say bitch. No. Please. No, no Please. I'm not gonna. No. Please. I already said it once. I'm not gonna say it again. Um, but that's what I've been telling you. You need somebody who's ambitious, who's smart, who's, um, you know, has a wicked sense of humor. And, nah, that, that's uh, okay. Just a two phone. Two phones, nice ass. That's all I need. 
What do you talk about with these women? I talk about, you know, they probably work out, right? I talk about the gym. That's nice. I talk about their diets, you know, oh. our skincare routines, you know, all very superficial things, you know. <laughs> no, if they have two foes, they're probably ambitious and smart. So it's all covered under that. The nice yes. ass is a bonus, okay? okay? <laughs> That's my type now. Two phones and a nice ass. Two phones and a nice ass. I don't want to date a guy with two phones because they're probably using one of them to sell weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. In your circle, yeah. You're in your circle. Yeah, in my circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite honestly, like, sure, I could put up with some weed, but it's like, I if you're... That's not, yeah, I can't, I can't deal with that. Well, hopefully, I can't deal with it. hopefully 2021 will be the year where you find your guy, a good sense of humor, who likes your Tinder profile. <laughs> and I find two phones and a good ass. Oh okay, just, just two phones. It sounds, sounds very, sounds very demeaning, objectifying. Just two phones, just two phones, just two phones. Oh, you think, you think that. Now you think that that sounds <laughs> yeah. objectifying? Now? It's terrible note to yeah. end the podcast on. Terrible note to end the podcast on two phones and nice ass. Oh my God. So that's ended nicely, you know. I'm recovering nicely. Thank you for all the messages people have sent. Mm. And uh, yeah, if you have two phones, let me know. Bye, everybody.